Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting Fall Bar. The photograph on the right is a reference for my painting. It's actually a photograph of a barn just down the road from where I live. When looking at the photograph, I have some decisions to make on how I want to interpret this scene and this subject matter and what areas I want to focus on. This was taken in the morning in the sun coming up to the right and the subject matter in the scene is backlit by the sun rising on the horizon. You'll notice that in the foreground there are some trees and ground cover and the barn is moving more towards the middle ground with some distant trees in a backlit sky. It's hard to see in this photograph but between the distant trees and the barn there's a flat area that's picking up the sun and is rather bright. And I'm gonna uh, focus on that a little bit in my painting to help cr to create distance. And I'm gonna go with a composition that will have my darkest values more in the foreground with some medium darks in the middle ground. And uh, the, the, the lightest lights are actually gonna be the, in the distance with the backlit sky. I begin by doing a light sketch using a B pencil of the major shapes in the composition. I'm working on a 140 pound cold pressed lanaquarel and I'm working at about a 20 degree angle. I'm going to begin by putting a wash in the sky area. I'm applying a wash of gamboge that has quite a bit of water in it and I'm applying it with a one inch wash brush. This is the one inch silver black velvet uh, wash brush it's a series that I really like to work with uh, especially in the larger sizes. So I'm going to bring this uh, wash down. Uh, it's loaded with water and it's flowing down the page because I'm working on an incline and I'm going to paint around the uh, shape of the building. And now I want to Put a little bit more uh, pigment in that so it's, it's a little brighter towards the bottom of my wash which is closer to the horizon in the background and even though I'm working at an angle because uh, the paint follows the path of least resistance and it'll go where the paper is wet I don't have to worry about it dripping down into the barn shape the uh, dry paper will resist the flow of the paint and um, now as I take this wash down you can see I'm painting over some of the tree shapes and this is going to dry fairly light and the the work that I'm going to be doing and some of those shapes that I'm covering is going to be a much darker value so I can just put this wash down as a nice consistent wash and then I'll be painting over it later with darker values. Now the area that I've applied this wash is saturated it's very wet so now I can come in here as I am uh, with a loaded brush and it's loaded with cerulean blue and I don't have to worry about blossoms because I'm painting wet and wet my paper saturated and uh, I, it's safe to come in and work on top of this and in this case I'm working wet and wet working a cool tone over top of worn tone and it's going to uh, tone that whole wash down but leave a bit of a glow towards the bottom of the horizon to give the suggestion of the sun coming up. Now you can see that I've got a bit of a, a water bead there that's accumulated at the top of that so I'm just going to come in with my brush and pick that up and it doesn't bother me there's a little bit of it that's come over the edge. I'm going to pick that bead up more towards the bottom too. If I leave it too long I risk the, the uh, potential for backwash to occur. Here I've completely dried my paper and you can see that it's dried much lighter and I now have a, a cooler tone towards the top and a much warmer tone at the bottom to give a suggestion of that sunrise. And I'm applying clear water over top of uh, my painting right now and again it's not going to disturb what I've already done because I dried it thoroughly before I began to put this water on top. And now what I'm going to do is bring in 
uh, a nice warm kind of autumn color, a gold uh, and, and a bit of an orangey gold to give the suggestion of the uh, foliage on this tree. And because I put a wash on first, I'm working wet into wet, and it's going to give me some nice soft edges and, and help bring that watercolor feel uh, into my composition. I'm going to use a little bit of a splatter to help create some texture in these uh, leafy tree shapes just by tapping uh, a loaded brush on my hand and you do have to be careful where you hit it and sometimes if you want you can put a Kleenex or tissue over top of the area you want to protect but it just creates a little bit of a texture and it's going into a, a wet surface so it, it dissolves and still gives a, a soft texture and I'll do this a few times as I develop this painting I'm going to come back with a little bit of a richer tone here and this is quinacrid and gold that I'm using and I've mixed in some quinacrid and coral to give me this uh, more rust color and my paper's still wet so I can keep coming in and working on this and uh, I'm not going to get any blossoms until it gets uh, the paper dries more I, I don't have that risk even if I did right now it wouldn't be terrible because of the just kind of the feeling of these uh, bunches of leaves that I'm trying to create. A little bit more splatter. And I'm going to develop this area as the painting progresses. I'm going to continue uh, with a little bit of splatter. I have a smaller brush. I have a darker value. I've taken my mixture of quinacrid and gold and quinacrid and coral and mixed in uh, just a little bit of burnt sienna and a touch of ultramarine blue to give me a very dark uh, red tone. Now I'm going to take the plastic scraper that I like to use and I'm going to uh, scrape out the shapes of some of these tree uh, trunks and branches. My paper is at a point where it's wet but it has a sheen to it as opposed to a, a high gloss when it's the paper is very wet and saturated and has a high gloss it, you can't uh, use this technique you need to let it dry a little bit it can't go too far though and then it won't move the paint because you're not removing paper here you're just sliding paint along and uh, it's kind of a it needs to be at the point where the paper is damp but not dry and again it can't be too saturated or just fill right back in so I'm just scraping these tree shapes to save some of the light edges that I want to play up later I'm taking some of this darker tone I'm putting it in this uh, area of foliage and it's still wet so it softens the edges still and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with a uh, coarse spray. It's not the bottle that I usually use for a fine mist. This has a little bit more of a coarse spray. So it's going to soften the edges a little bit, but it's going to help create some additional texture. And if you look in some of those darker areas, you'll see where I have uh, little bits of splatter showing. It's created that texture where that, that coarse spray has hit and the paper has to be somewhat damp for that to occur. I'm going to begin working on the shadowed side of the structure here and uh, I'm using a uh, sable. It's a good general purpose brush I like to use. It's an Escoda Reserva. It's a size 4. That's about as small as I get with uh, any of uh, my sables. And I'm painting using a combination of ultramarine blue and quinacrid and rose and uh, it's a fairly dark middle value but I'm going to add a little bit of water to that to lighten that up and then I'm going to keep this side charged with color so I'm coming back with a little bit of that quinacrid and uh, gold and quinacrid and coral mixture and I'm going to alternate a little bit between that uh, purple tone 
and the, the gold and I'll, I'm going to put in a little bit stronger accent of some of the quinacridone and coral also and so I'm just bringing this down as one wash and it's but it's charged with different colors often when I'm doing uh, a uh, shape like this and, and even when mixing washes I'll use a uh, half inch flat brush um, and I could could use that I probably should be using that for this but um, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with this uh, just general purpose round and it allows me to get a lot of nice color variation into my wash I'll have to see as this progresses if this is going to be dark enough um, but it's picking up uh, some of the warm tones out of the tree just getting a suggestion of some reflection of light even though this is on the shadow side of this building and I'm going to try and use these color combinations throughout my composition as I develop my painting I brought the wash down the side of the structure and now I'm starting to apply a mixture that has some sap green in it and some of the quinacridone and gold with a little bit of uh, quinacridone and coral and I'm carrying that value straight into some of these uh, bushes and shrubs that are near the, the building structure themselves. So even though I've changed color, I haven't changed the value a lot on those shrub shapes. Now I'm taking some of the, the uh, purple tone and taking it under the edge of the roof to give the suggestion of the shadow there. And this is a red barn. Uh, but I'm going to try and keep it charged with a variety of warm and cool colors. I'm going to put this image of this subject here in the lower left corner. And you can see that um, even though this is a red barn, it, it is hard to see a little bit in the image. But uh, I'm not just taking barn red mixed in my palette and, and applying it to a rectangle. I'm uh, keeping it charged with a variety of warm and cool colors using these purple and gold tones um, to give the reflection of autumn. Um, that's really what I'm trying to stress in my painting. So I brought the wash along the front of the, the structure and the whole building is pretty much a middle value right now. Middle, maybe a little bit of a dark middle value in some areas. But I have a variety of warm and cool colors, uh, more cool dominance on the shadowed side, but um, everything is just about a middle value. Next, I'm going to start to develop the uh, tree line that's there in the distance. So I'm going to take. Uh, a light middle value it's light it's lighter than what I've been working with and I'm using some quinacridone and gold and I'm going to start to define that distant tree line and I'm also going to work in some sap green into this because there is some some green still in some of the areas of this uh, composition and in the subject matter so there's a mixture of sap green with a little bit of uh, quinacridone and coral and some quinacridone and gold in it but it's uh, for the most part it's uh, got a lot of sap green and uh, I don't want to get too dark with this tree line because it's it's kind of in the uh, it's a distant tree line and it's going to be a lighter value than my my barring shape and the shapes that are in the foreground. So as I develop this painting, I want to make sure that I don't get too dark there because then it gets confusing on, on what, what uh, is really in the distance and what is near. If everything's the same value, uh, it, it tends to make things kind of flat, but when you can vary your values and the warms and cools to give the suggestions of distance, um, it can be much more effective. And right below this shape that I'm painting is that area I mentioned early on where the sunlight is coming in and hitting kind of a flat grassy area. Right now it's still white and I want to try and maintain that light tone. And you can see I've worked in some of the gold tone that I've been using. Um, 
So I have a nice mixture of the sap green, the quinacridone gold, and the quinacridone coral there. I'm going to begin working closer to the foreground here using some of the same colors that I've been using, the quinacridone gold, a little quinacridone coral. I'm going to come in with some sap green in this mixture, very similar to what I have in the distant tree line. I'm working with a, another silver black velvet brush. It's a wash brush. It's a jumbo round small is the size. And uh, it has a, just a nice feel, holds a lot of paint. and. Uh, is flexible and soft but it still gives good control and I like the way it, ap uh, it applies the paint so I like to use that when I'm doing some of these larger fluid washes. It doesn't come to a fine point but it does come to a, a bit of a blunt point that is adequate when you're doing some of these larger shapes. I've taken a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, mixed them together, and added it to a little bit of the mixture that I've been working with. And uh, it's giving me this uh, darker, earthy tone that I'm applying here. And uh, trying to have this uh, kind of this road that comes into the composition here from the left uh, lead you into the composition. And so I'm. I'm painting these um, kind of areas of, of brush and scrub that are along the roadside here with some of these darker values and I'll be building those values as I go but I'm going to leave a little bit of a path of light coming in uh, on that road as this develops just to help try and lead you into the composition. using that same mixture with the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna but a little darker and uh, just wanted a little bit uh, darker value here on this shape and I'm applying it in a wet in wet situation here because my paper is still wet my brush is loaded and uh, so when I make those marks the paint diffuses a little bit and creates a bit of a soft edge While my paper is still damp, I'm going to take my scraping tool here and just give the suggestion of some grassy shapes sticking up. It gives me a little bit of a vertical element to my composition and also creates some overlap. I'm working with some darker uh, value midtones here, closer to the building in this area. This has some shrubbery that's on the side uh, going parallel with the uh, building itself. So I'm, I've got a mixture here with some sap green in it, a little bit of the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and it just give me a dark valued kind of a neutral uh, green tone. And so now I start to build some uh, overlapping shapes and values here as I move from the foreground to the barn and then towards the background and the distant trees and the skyline. And there on the left hand corner is a little bit of a shrub uh, on the, sh the corner of the building and it, it, I painted it so that it's got a little bit of a highlight um, on the side that would be facing the sun and it contrasts the darker side of the building there that's in shadow. So this road is going to be a little lighter than some of the surrounding ground cover and trees, but it still needs to be toned down some. So I'm using a little bit of the purple tone that I used on the side of the building with some of the other earthy tones I've been using. And I'm just going to put a wash over top of this uh, white of the pure white of the paper just to tone it down. And I'll probably develop some, some marks, some angular marks and shapes on this as the painting process uh, evolves. There's an area here in the near foreground that just has some leafy plants and some mounds of dirt. So I'm just gonna paint that as one uh, large shape uh, and it's gonna be a darker value. It's very cool right now. 
Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of a warmer tone in there, but it's still very dark, neutral tones, very earthy. And uh, this uh, darker value here in the foreground will help create some distance between uh, what's going on here and then moving back through the composition and when you see the bar and the distant trees and the distant sky, uh, sunlit sky. So I'm just giving the suggestion of some of those grassy shapes coming out of that kind of a shadow area. I'm going to take a, a mixture of sap green with a little cad yellow light in it and uh, paint this area here that is the, the kind of the flat grassy area I had mentioned earlier that's sunlit a little bit. So as this per painting progresses, I want this to kind of stand out as a light area. It's not going to be white, but it's going to be one of the lighter areas in the composition. Doing some more work in the uh, leafy areas of this tree. Just a little bit more intense mixture of the quinacrid and gold and quinacrid and coral. Now I've got a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and I want these uh, the trunks of these trees and some of these branches to be a much darker value so I've got this earthy dark tone and I'm using a, a rigger brush uh, a number six rigger brush that I have to make some of these brush marks so you can see I still even though I'm just painting uh, a tree trunk I have a bead of water that I'm leading around to bring it down the page I'll take some of this dark tone on these branches that are uh, reaching out and there's going to be a lot of overlap with these linear uh, shapes that I'm making to give the indication of uh, these overlapping branches and the tree trunks. I'm not ready yet. I'm going to take the, some of these branches out a little farther, um, but at some point I'm going to take uh, a, a branch, the linear marks, and let them carry over into uh, that shape on the shadow side of the building to help create some overlap. I'm not going to do that just yet, but the further I get down my painting process, I'm going to take some of those branches into the to the building shape there just to help create overlap and, and further reinforce the feeling of distance. And the reason I don't want to do that just yet is I feel I still have some more work to do on the side of that building with darker value and uh, so I'm just going to hold off to take some of, some of these uh, shapes of the tree, these linear shapes into that area right now. I'm going to continue to bring that dark value tone down the, the uh, length of this tree trunk. And while I'm using my rigger because I have it in my hand, I could do this uh, just as well by using, say, my one inch or my half inch flat brush. It's always good if you can work uh, with a larger brush. It helps keep things loose and you don't tend to tighten up as much. I'm going to take a nylon brush that I have. This is about a three quarter inch flat nylon brush. I think it's actually called a varnish brush, but it has a fairly sharp edge on it. Um, and I like to use it to do some lifting. So this is going to cut some linear, light, lighter linear marks into some of the darker brush work that I've done. And that again helps build another layer, which adds to the feeling of depth. And uh, this is this one particular brush I have is made by Raphael, um, and it's, I tried to look online. I was going to put it on my website, 
um, for uh, for people who have questions about uh, the equipment I use. And uh, I had a hard time locating this online. I picked it up at a local craft store some time back. Um, but if you have a, a, a nice a flat nylon brush, a half inch or three quarters, uh, it normally does a pretty good job of cutting into uh, the paint and doing some lifting off. I'm going to use this dark earth tone to paint these uh, fence posts uh, that are here along the road. And you want to make sure when you when you put these in that the end doesn't end at the edge of something else and create a tangent. You can see on the one to the left, it goes above the uh, line of the, the gold um, grassy areas and the other one is below it. So you don't want to create a tangent. Now I'm moving on to, to the back uh, tree line here and I'm using a, a smaller rigger brush. This is a number one rigger brush uh, and I'm just giving the indication of the, the tree trunk that's back there in the distance uh, behind that open field that's between the, the building and that distant tree line. I'm going to do some work on the rooftop here. I was undecided whether I was going to leave it uh, with the white of the paper or bring a, a value uh, to it. And uh, I decided I'm going to take some of this uh, same mixture of uh, warm and cool colors that I've been using with the purple tones and the gold tones. And um, although it's going to be a lighter value, I'm going to use some of those on the, the top of this roof. You can see that I'm finishing up getting a wash here on this rooftop. And just as I've done throughout the, the rest of the painting, I've tried to, to charge that wash with, with color, have a variety of color in it so that it's not just a flat uh, one tone wash that I'm putting down. Now I have a quill brush that I like to use for uh, more detailed work. It holds quite a bit of paint, but it comes with a nice sharp point, so it's good to do some detail. And I've loaded it up with a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and a little alizarin crimson in it with a touch of quinacridone gold so that it's not quite as bright. And this is a, a, a dark value, and uh, I'm trying to indicate the shadowed areas along this building structure. And I'm going to use some darker values here, but they're not going to be dominant in this area, but they are going to help define the, the form and the shadows that, that are going on in the, uh, the barn structure. I, I don't want my darkest darks to be there in that middle ground uh, as a dominant. I'm going to move those more towards the foreground, and I need to get much darker in the foreground yet. I'm taking some of the dark tone on the underside of uh, the building here to give uh, a better representation of the, the structure itself. Uh, so you can see the angle of the, the roof as it comes over the edge of the barn there. So I'm still using the quill brush, but I could be using a flat brush uh, or another brush. And I'm going to put some of this dark tone here. And then I'm going to, um, I think, take the fine mist spray. And I'm going to uh, gently spray some of this tone kind of down uh, the side of this building. And it just gives a, give a nice gradation here. So here's my fine mist spray bottle. And I'm going to just let that run down a little bit. I'm going to do a bit more of that on the uh, this other side of the building here, taking that dark value, putting underneath the roof line.
and then I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm just going to diffuse that color downwards to create some interest. I like the colors I have on that shadow side of the building but I just don't think it's dark enough so I'm going to come in I'm going to do some uh, darker value washes over top of that. And now I'm using a half inch flat brush and even though I'm, I'm just coming in with a darker value I still want to keep it interesting and charged with color so this is a combination still of some warm and cool tones and even what I had before will will show through a little bit so this is a half inch uh, silver black velvet brush it's similar to the other larger wash brushes that I was using and I'm going to carry that tone all the way down uh, to where it would touch the, the ground. I'm also going to take some of that and carry it uh, more towards the front and uh, do some similar brushwork here on the the front side of this building but it's not going to go all the way down it's just going to give the suggestion that it's being affected by the overhang of the roof and creating some shadowed areas Taking some of that darker value with a bit of a green tone to it, I've added some sap green to the mixture and uh, just given a little bit uh, more of a darker definition of the shrubs that are alongside the barn structure. Using my flat brush with a dark value on, I'm going to um, strengthen the directional feeling of this, the, these grassy shapes here with just some linear marks uh, that are near in the foreground. And uh, again, this is with a, a very dark value. I want these tree trunks to be much darker than what they are because I'm trying to keep these darker values in the foreground here. So I've got my half inch flat brush with a darker value and I'm just going to make some uh, dark dark value shapes going up the, uh, the tree trunks using this half inch flat brush. I still don't quite have the values that I'm after in the foreground. It needs to be darker still. So I've got a mixture of this quinacridone and gold with a little quinacridone and coral and some burnt sienna in it. And uh, starting to paint some of these um, grassy areas in the foreground with a, a little bit of a richer, darker tone. I want to break this shape up a little bit more here with this road leading in. So I'm going to take some of this warm tone and drag it across that shape and tie the, the left side into the right side, if you will, with that, those brush marks. I'm going to use my quill brush here loaded with a dark uh, purple tone just to sharpen up some of the edges allowing the uh, around the structure and some of the composite some of the other areas of the composition um, give a little bit more detail defining some edges I'll use this to give the suggestion of some split boards and uh, just some some crisper edges where things come together so as I start to get further in my painting process, I, I reach a point where I start to do some of this smaller brushwork with a darker value 
to, to really def sharpen up edges and, and just further define some of the detail areas. I'm continuing around the structure, making some of these uh, darker brush marks, even on some of these areas that are very dark. I'm still making some darker brush marks. They won't have the contrast, but they still give a suggestion of, of the boards in this structure. And I'll carry that down a little bit into the, the, the grassy shapes that I have beside the barn. I want these fence posts to stand out a little bit more, so I'm going to put a darker value on uh, those linear shapes that I have to give the suggestion of those fence posts. So I've looked at my, my painting and I've decided that I need to go much darker here in the foreground if I want to create that uh, strong feeling of distance. So I'm taking a mixture of some of the violet tones with some of the, the golds but mixed to a very dark value. And I'm going to strengthen the value that I'm using in this shape here in the bottom right corner uh, in the foreground. I want it to feel much darker. Um, and feel like you're moving back into space as you go to some of the lighter values. So I've got this mixture of ultramarine blue with some alizarin crimson and I put in a little bit of uh, quinacridone gold to, to neutralize a little bit but uh, this mixture I'm using now has more of the gold tone in it so it still has a combination of warm and cool in this wash I'm putting down but it's very dark value. Um, yeah, it's not as obvious. Just given the suggestion of some of these grassy shapes coming out there. And now I'm going to take this tone also and I'm going to go across the, the road there and strengthen some of the values in that area. And you see that I'm, I'm being uh, fairly loose in my approach. I'm still in control of what I'm, I'm putting down on paper, but I'm not doing this with a little brush and trying to render it. I'm making big bold strokes with a dark value, and uh, I'm more focused on the shapes than I am the subject matter, and also the values. I want to break some of these shapes up a little bit more, especially this road. So I'm, I'm taking this darker value, still using this silver black uh, velvet jumbo round small wash brush and I'm just making some shapes as I move into the composition along the roadside there and I want to break that uh, light purple toned shape that I have that represents the road up a little bit so I'm going to make some marks just in there just to create a little bit more interest and break that shape up a little bit and give a little variation to it. And next, while my paper is still damp, it's not overly saturated and it's not dry, it's at a damp state, it has a sheen to it. I'm going to take my plastic scraping tool and I'm going to uh, scrape into these darker valued washes I just put down to add more interest, more overlap, more texture, and, and more direction just using this scraping tool. So you can see that I'm moving that pigment and in this area here it's more subtle because it's kind of a dark on a dark but you still have that subtle indication of that those shapes and that, that movement. Now I'm going to take my half inch flat brush with a, a light middle value wash and I want to break up that shape a little bit. So I'm making some brush marks that follow the angle of the rooftop. That just helps contour that surface and, and further defines for the eye what's going on there. So it's not a lot, just, just enough to break that shape up a little bit and give the suggestion of the direction of that rooftop. I'm 
I'm going to bring some darker values uh, onto these branches and I'm going to be a little more deliberate in some areas where I'm breaking those up, those shapes up, so that it gives a suggestion of a branch going over top of it or one going underneath. I'm using my number six rigger that I have. I want to take some some darker valued uh, branch shapes over closer to this building and as I had mentioned earlier I'm going to uh, take a few of those and just create some overlap over top of the building. I always feel anytime you can create some overlap you start to help build uh, depth into your composition. So I'm going to make another mark here just to give another feeling that uh, this tree is in the foreground in front of that barn. Uh, not a lot, but just, just enough to give that suggestion. I'm going to make some linear marks over on the right side here to give that suggestion of the, the branches of this tree that's sitting over here. And in front of the, the building structure itself, there's a sapling that's, that's sitting there. So it gives another opportunity to create some overlap and, and add to the layers uh, that have been building up as we progress through this uh, composition. I feel that this uh, foliage on the tree isn't defined enough in some areas. So I'm taking a, a richer mixture uh, with a quinacridin gold with quinacridin coral in it and uh, going to apply this to these areas here. Um, just a little bit of a darker value than what's there and a richer color. And it, it, again, you, now you have this kind of more vibrant, a little darker valued uh, shapes that are over top of this, uh, what I had down before, which are a little, a little more pale and not as defined. So it, it helps build some depth and layers just in the foliage itself. And I want to carry that tone out a little bit here uh, away from the tree to some of these branches that are reaching out and just have a little bit of an indication that those leaves are hanging on out there. I'm going to soften those shapes up just a little bit uh, with a fine mist spray. I want to pick up some of those violet tones that I have in the rest of the composition into the, the foliage here. So I'm taking a mixture of the ultramarine blue and rose matter quinacridone and touching the areas of those leaves that are still wet from the spray so it has the effect of working wet on wet. I'm going to take some of the the gold tone and going to repeat that feeling of a few leaves hanging on on this sapling here that's in between this foreground and the in the barn structure. This structure has some of the, the rods that go off the rooftop of, of rural barns often. And uh, so I'm going to give the indication of those. I like the, that vertical mark there helps take that roof line and, and create a little interest in it. And as I do these, I want to vary them a little bit. I don't want them to look identical height-wise or spacing-wise. Um, so they're a little bit intermittent. One short, one's a little longer than the other. But it provides a nice... Uh, piece of interest on top of that roof. I'm going to put a white mat on this to get a good look at it. This is something that I do throughout my painting process just to get a clean look at how my painting is progressing. I hope you enjoyed watching this and if you get a chance check out my Facebook group Brick Swords Watercolor Friends and Subscribers and if you ever have a question about my materials you can always go to the studio page of my website rsurwitzart.com and if you have any questions you can contact me at contactrsurwitzart.com at gmail.com. 
Thanks for watching.